everyone, to another deep dive episode of Militar Tech Zone. Today we're exploring a weapon that military analysts say could redefine naval strategy as we know it. It's fast, it's unpredictable, and it may be the biggest threat that modern carrier strike groups have ever faced. I'm talking about the hypersonic Zircon missile, an engineering marvel capable of reaching speeds that push the limits of what current defenses can even begin to track. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future breakdowns on disruptive military technology. For nearly 80 years, aircraft carriers have ruled the oceans as symbols of ultimate power projection. Massive floating air bases weighing close to 100,000 tons, surrounded by layers of protection designed to make them all but untouchable. Every carrier operates inside a fortress of steel, electronics, and air superiority. Destroyers, cruisers, early warning aircraft and submarines form a defensive bubble meant to detect and neutralize threats hundreds of kilometers away. Modern naval doctrine has relied on this layered defense system for decades, assuming that any incoming aircraft or missile could be intercepted long before it ever reached the carrier's perimeter. And for a long time, that assumption held true. Traditional cruise missiles, whether US, Tomahawks, European designs, or Russian systems like Kaliber, move fast enough to deliver devastating strikes, but their speeds and trajectories are still predictable. Even high subsonic or low supersonic missiles travel along patterns that most advanced navies can track and respond to with relative confidence. Against these threats, the naval shield of Aegis-equipped cruisers and destroyers has been remarkably effective. But the strategic balance begins to shift the moment you introduce a weapon that doesn't behave the way missiles have behaved for the last half century. The Zircon belongs to a new class entirely. A hypersonic cruise missile capable of maneuvering within the atmosphere at speeds that were once considered purely theoretical. Presented by Russia as a game-changing technological leap, the Zircon reportedly reaches speeds of up to Mach 9, around 9,800 km per hour. To give that number some perspective, something moving that fast could cross the distance between Moscow and London in about 15 minutes. But the raw speed alone doesn't tell the full story. What makes this missile so disruptive is that it combines extreme velocity with the ability to alter its path during flight. Unlike a ballistic missile, which follows a predictable arc once launched, a hypersonic glide weapon like Zircon stays within the atmosphere and executes unpredictable adjustments as it streaks toward its target. This agility is precisely what causes so much concern in Western strategic circles. Current defense systems are calibrated to intercept projectiles that follow known patterns. They anticipate trajectories, calculate interception windows, and rely on consistent behavior from the incoming threat. Zircon breaks all of those assumptions at once. A missile launched from a submarine or frigate at a distance of 1,000 kilometers could impact in just a few minutes. If launched from closer, the reaction window shrinks to mere seconds, barely enough time to confirm the threat, let alone mount a coordinated response. The question then becomes, how is a weapon like this even possible? The answer lies at the heart of advanced propulsion technology, within a device that seems almost like science fiction, the scramjet engine. While conventional jet engines rely on rotating machinery to compress air, a scramjet has no moving parts. It is essentially a carefully shaped duct designed to harness the incredible pressure created when air rushes in at hypersonic speeds. But this engine cannot start on its own. It requires an initial boost, usually through a solid-fuel rocket stage, to accelerate the vehicle to speeds high enough for the scramjet to function. Once the Zircon reaches the right threshold, the booster separates, and the scramjet ignites, mixing fuel with streaming air and sustaining combustion, while the airflow remains supersonic. Sustaining that combustion is one of the hardest challenges in aerospace engineering. The entire process happens in milliseconds, under conditions of extreme heat and pressure. Yet, when executed successfully, it allows the missile to maintain incredible speeds through the thick layers of the atmosphere. At those velocities, another phenomenon begins to occur. The creation of a plasma envelope around the missile's surface. This plasma sheath forms due to intense friction with the surrounding air and can partially obscure the missile from radar detection. It's not that the weapon becomes invisible, but the plasma can reduce its radar signature enough to complicate tracking for certain defensive systems. Ironically, the same plasma can interfere with the missile's own onboard sensors, which is why experts believe the Zircon slows down slightly during its terminal phase, just enough to regain accurate guidance for the final plunge toward its target. Even at reduced speeds, however, it remains far faster and more maneuverable than most interceptors are designed to handle. Now let's break down what this means for the classic Aegis defense cycle. First, detection becomes difficult, because plasma interference hides parts of the missile's radar cross-section. Infrared satellite sensors may spot the launch, but once the missile dips into lower atmospheric layers, real-time tracking becomes much more challenging. Second comes time. If a defense system detects the missile at, say, 300 kilometers, Zircon traveling at hypersonic speed will cover that distance in around two minutes. In those brief moments, the defenders must classify the object, calculate a firing solution, launch interceptors, and then guide them toward a target that is constantly changing direction. Finally, 
Even if an interceptor gets close, the incredible kinetic energy of a hypersonic projectile means that a near miss or partial hit might not be enough to neutralize it. The sheer momentum of a multi-ton object moving this fast can cause catastrophic damage even without a large warhead. Reports circulating in early 2024 suggested that one of the Zircon's first known combat uses produced debris, indicating a smaller warhead than many analysts predicted. If that is true, it supports the idea that a missile relies heavily on kinetic impact, rather than explosive mass. This early evidence confirms that the system is not just a theoretical prototype, but an operational capability that nations around the world must now account for. The arrival of a weapon like Zircon carries enormous geopolitical implications. For nations that do not possess aircraft carriers, hypersonic anti-ship missiles offer the ability to deny access to powerful navies at significant distances. A single frigate or submarine equipped with these missiles can force carrier strike groups to operate far from strategic coastlines. The psychological effect is just as significant as the physical threat. Suddenly, assets once considered untouchable must rethink how close they can safely approach contested regions. This shift has ignited a global technological race. Western nations are accelerating their own hypersonic programs while also researching next-generation defensive tools such as directed energy weapons and rapid response interceptors. These developments are promising but remain years away from full deployment. Meanwhile, Russia has already installed Zircon missiles aboard surface ships and submarines, giving them an operational advantage in the near term. Ultimately, the Zircon isn't just a missile. It's a strategic message. It signals a future in which speed, maneuverability, and atmospheric stealth reshape the rules of naval warfare. Carrier supremacy, long the backbone of global power projection, faces a new and serious challenge. And while many questions remain about quantities, cost, and long-term reliability, one thing is clear. Hypersonic technology has arrived, and the world's navies must adapt faster than ever before. If you enjoyed this breakdown, and want to see more deep dive analyses on the weapons shaping the future of warfare, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Military Tech Zone, and share it with your fellow military tech enthusiasts. Your engagement is what helps this community grow, and it tells us that you want more content that goes beyond the headlines and into the real engineering, strategy, and geopolitical impact behind modern military systems. Every time you hit that like button or leave a comment, you're directly supporting the effort it takes to research, write, and produce these in-depth investigations. This channel is committed to delivering content that isn't superficial, content that explains not only what a weapon can do, but why it matters, how it shifts global dynamics, and what its existence means for the future of conflict and defense. Your support keeps us constantly digging deeper, analyzing propulsion systems, examining classified level concepts, exploring real operational scenarios, and breaking down technologies that most people barely hear about. So if you want more videos about hypersonic weapons, next-generation naval combat, aerospace engineering breakthroughs, and the emerging tools that could redefine future warfare, subscribing is the best way to stay ahead. Share this video with someone who loves military tech as much as you do, and help us expand a community of people who appreciate detailed, serious analysis. Thanks for watching, thank you for being part of Militar Tech Zone, and I'll see you in the next episode.